This is, this is the Triple Play Fantasy Basketball Show. Back again with another edition of College Basketball Preview featuring one of the most interesting teams in college basketball, the Memphis Tigers, led by head coach Penny Hardaway. I'm your host, Coach James Lewis, with my other buddy, head coach Kevin Coleman, over there representing California. I'm representing the DMV area. We're here to talk a little Memphis basketball hoops. How you doing, Kev? I'm doing, man. I'm doing well. You know, just hanging out, loving it. And hey, college basketball is coming around the corner. I love college basketball, and I'm excited to get jumped into it this year. And I think Memphis is one of these teams that we're going to talk about. Is uh, they really could go a lot of different ways. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. And I can't believe Penny Hardaway has been there for four years. Uh, I just feels like just yesterday he was there talking about how they're going to win a title. Uh, and you know, it's been a it, well, they did technically, we'll talk about that, but you know, what, what does that look <laughs> they, like? They did win a uh, title, they coach. did uh, NIT it, title, but NIT is a thing, we'll see, we'll see what we'll see what how this, this shapes down. But it's gonna be interesting to see because Memphis is in a weird spot right now where they're good, but can they get over that hump? Yeah, they're gonna be the most one of the most exciting um teams in college basketball, uh, based on uh, their number one recruiting class that we'll get into. But let's let's recap what happened last year, they did win the. NIT championship. Yeah, so they won the NIT. They went 20 and 8, and I thought they underperformed last year. Uh, but it was, a, you know, it's hard for last year it, with with COVID and all the shitty rules and everything that was going on. It's hard for teams to really, really, really get in the groove last year. I thought he did well, you know, 20 and 8, 11 and 4. Third in the AAC is not good enough, though. Let's be real. Memphis needs to be its top tier competing for that championship every year, especially with the talent they have there. But when you look at the roster, you know, you know, strength of schedule was was not great 98th but they did have, they they did look good on the defensive side their defensive rating was 87.1 that was actually second in all of NCA out of 347 teams their offensive rating though was 206 out of 347 teams that's not good so offensively they need to improve but if you look what Penny has done there you know we need to see that improvement for the next time coming and you know this year is going to be a little bit you know they're not playing the best non-conference schedule you'll see it here uh you know they do play Alabama and that is going to be a good game. We see Alabama. They got that thing going again. Uh, they play – they're going really SEC heavy in their schedule when you look at what they're what they're doing this year. Uh, they do play Virginia Tech. They're playing Georgia, Ole Miss. So, again, SEC heavy. Tennessee again. Obviously, that's the big-time rivalry game. And then you're going to get yes. into – like the, the, they get into their you know, American schedule. And, and to be quite honest with the American schedule – they should they should compete in that in that league. They should win the title. Like there's no there's nothing to say that they shouldn't. They should actually win this championship. And if they don't, I think if they don't win an American championship, then that is a that is a very telling sign about Penny Hardaway's ten, ten, tenure there. Uh, I do like how he kind of set up the schedule against Georgia, these other schools, Virginia Tech, uh, and, and early on they should go undefeated, right? I mean Tennessee Tech, come on, North Carolina Central, St. Louis, Western Kentucky, those are the teams that they should go go ahead and beat. Uh, they should be undefeated going into the NIT season tip-off against uh, Virginia Tech. And then they're going to play either Iowa State or Xavier. And that's going to be interesting in Brooklyn, the Barclays Center. So there, there's some talent there. And if they should, they're going to get tested pretty well, but they should win the AAC. That should be their goal. And that should be what they do this season. Yeah, building uh, confidence at the beginning of the season. Um, not in that, I guess, the Maui, you know, invitational, where you really, really get get tested early. They're, they're you know, warming it up. And, uh, we just saw a Lamone Owen exhibition. Um, head coach Bonzi Wells. Uh, it was just an interesting, interesting watch to see some of these players play. We we did not get to see Imani Bates, uh, Landers Nally. Like it would maybe they were you know protecting the the, the watch and the scouting reports on that. But uh, it it's interesting. One of my takeaways uh, watching that game was <clears throat> the defense. Um, he's pressing full court. Uh, and, and, and last year I noticed like, well, even in Penny's, uh, tenure, it's funny because he's such a creative, uh, basketball player mind offensively. You would think that he would be, he, his coaching would be driven by offense, but it's more a little, it's more on, on the defensive end. And you've seen some, um, some blunders in, in the past with, with Precious Ochoa and, and James Wiseman. And now it just hadn't, didn't perfectly fit. Of course, you know, James Wiseman went home uh, pretty early there, but um, it, the offense has not fully clicked in the Penny Hardaway era. And maybe bringing in a great basketball line, uh, mine, Jeez. the lifer, Larry Brown. Uh, you bring in Larry Brown, and I mean, what 
better assistant coach uh, can you have than 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 a Larry Brown, somebody that has coached uh, many many greats, uh, and and the relationship with Allen Iverson stands out very heavy here. And then you got a star coming in in Imani Bates, and then Rasheed Wallace, like uh, just the gold uh, to big men and um, a man's man, and uh, you know one of the better players that are you know that's not in the hall. Um, I love me some Sheed Wallace. Uh, he used to bump with the best in the nineties, as far as, uh, you know, the post is concerned. So, you know, you have guard perspective, you have big man perspective, and then you have the OG and Larry Brown. What do you think about these, uh, coaching additions before we even look at the number one recruiting <laughs> class, right? Hey, you know, I love Larry. I've loved Larry forever. And Larry's a builder. He's not a stayer, right? Like we looked at his career and everything <laughs> he does, like he builds up programs and then he goes and he's an excellent mind. He was a really great college basketball coach too. And so when you look at him, I think Penny did a great job of bringing him in. I think that's an excellent hire. I think he, he provides that stability for him. And I love Larry because Larry, I feel like is coached at every single school and every single team in the NBA. And, but he has that experience. I think Sheed's the wild card. I, you and me grew up watching Sheed. I love Sheed. I think that he's amazing, but I also think that he can bring a kind of a sense of, I said, you said, OG, and I like that. I think you need that guy on your, on your roster, on your bench. And he can provide some leadership for these kids. And I think that he's a he's a molder of men. And I think that he's a good role model for what basketball should be. Because when you listen to him talk, if you don't watch the tape of him getting technicals and all that kind of stuff, he is a legitimate role model. And he's someone that I really, really love as a as a as a man and as a as a player. I always I always respected Sheed. And he brings that NBA caliber, that that championship caliber. So if Penny's saying something, and Larry Brown, who's a Hall of Fame coach, is saying something, and then Rasheed Wallace, who could be a Hall of Fame and an NBA champion saying something, you better damn well listen. And so I think that's what they bring. And I think this is an amazing coaching staff. I would love to be in their coach's room. That would be a lot of fun. And we, we were just talking before we got on air about assistant coach, how they can be real, realer than the, the head coach. Uh, like they can – yeah they can get on the player harder slash be a friend a little bit more. I think Rasheed Wallace is a perfect compliment. And um, <clears throat> on his podcast, him and Bonzi Wells and ball is life. Uh, like he he's uh, featured a lot of these like high school prospects going into the league. So he's yeah. got a relationship with these players. Uh, uh, we, uh, we spent enough time on the coaching staff, but like, you know, we like that, but that, these are additions. Let's talk about a little bit about subtractions. Yeah, so DJ Jeffries leaves, uh, you know, nine, nine, nine points, five rebounds, okay, just to assist. Boogie Ellis and guy, leaves. And a guy that uh, uh, Penny coached in high school, that he was part of that, James Wiseman, um, the state championship team. They won like a two or three in a couple of years. So it he's he's a guy that's, in, you know, interesting to see him to, to see him leave since, you know, you know yeah. Penny's helped shape him, mold him. But I think it's part of an opportunity thing. I don't think there's any – any any love lost there but uh yeah dj uh, jeffries was a talented kid uh probably would have lost uh some of his uh his position and his minutes so he moves on Big, yeah. boogie ellis boogie ellis you know he originally committed to duke and he flipped to join hardaway in memphis and it's weird because now he's going to return home go back to la go to usc i think that's a great grab for usc i, I really like what they do there but hey he, you know he had some big performances late last season. He scored 27 in the AAC uh, attorney lost to Houston. He had 23 in the NFT championship. So yep. I think those two back, those two are losses. Like let's keep it real there. Like those two guys, especially in that backcourt, what are you looking for? I think those two are big losses there. Uh, I don't really care about these other two guys. You could talk about those guys, but those two first guys, those guys are big losses for that backcourt. Now who's going to step in. I think that's the key, the key that we have to mention. Absolutely, and um, yeah, you you mentioned Boogie Ellis. I I think it was either J James Wiseman or Precious that shows like, hey, come come play with me over here at Memphis, yeah. and that was uh, his decision to kind of uh, switch. The, the the Duke faithful was not very happy about uh, that decision, and um, we wishing the best for uh, for Boogie Ellis as he gets a new opportunity over there in USC. But we we, we got to talk about the number one recruiting class, and it is straight out flat out uh, amazing class, the transfers that they're bringing in. So they bring in Imani Bates, who's the number one junior and reclassified and becomes the number four player. Uh, it's, it's weird how that works out. But uh, Jalen um, Duran did the same thing. Um, he was one, two, him and Imani Bates, they, they reclassified to go four or five um, into this new class. Uh, Josh Minot is uh, 
a high flyer. He's got NBA uh, scouts, you know, raving about his, his athleticism and his his future potential. And he's going to be exciting coming off the bench. And then you get uh, Jonathan Lawson, who's a number nine, 99 recruit. Um, he, he gets his brother, uh, uh, Chandler Lawson, a non, number 95 recruit the year before from Oregon coming over. Uh, they probably won't play too, too much, but, you know, it's cool to have brothers brothers on a team and um, guys that, I mean, they can play. And they, they most teams in the nation, they, they'll get heavy minutes. Uh, a transfer coming in, Ter- uh, Earl Timberlake, who was the number one player coming out of Maryland. He went to DeMath. They played with some Hunter Dickerson. Um, he's exciting because he is a physical specimen. He's athletic. Uh, we'll see how he fits in. He has some flexibility as far as being able to play a three, four, and five. And then and he was Tyler hurt. He was hurt last year too. And he was hurt. He played seven games. Um, yeah. So this is this, like this. I feel like he's almost in addition to that, like recruiting class and that, you know, the kid that didn't play too much is highly recruited. Number 35 in the nation is nothing, <laughs> nothing to sniff at. And then they bring back Tyler Harris, who, who played his first two years uh, in Memphis, started, started heavy um, that, that freshman campaign. Um, he went to Iowa state last year, but you know, the little guy, um has confidence has swagger that you're gonna need off the bench uh so let's talk about you know basically the nba talent here uh imani bates uh, if he was eligible for the nba draft he would be in in the talks for the number one pick i've i've stated on record um years now that imani bates to me is my favorite prospect coming out it's hard um when you got chet holmgren and, and paolo von carroll who's just out out of this world good um but uh, Jalen Duran is is NBA um, ready and capable and can enter this draft and on all likelihood he'll be a top five NBA pick. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Imani Bates, uh, although he can't enter because of, of birthday things. Even though he if he could enter last year, he would. Um, he just <laughs> he's just all about the league. They maybe they need <laughs> to change the rules for this kid. Maybe it's too late. Um, but being a sophomore and being the Gatorade player of the year as a sophomore is just next level. It just, you just never see that. Um, and for Lincoln high school gives you 29, 10 and kids, a killer, man. He is so vicious when he plays, he's so aggressive. His confidence is out the roof, man. Like he, he he's intimidating, honestly. Um, and, and six, nine frame and his pure shooting stroke, uh, his ability to just go get you a bucket at any moment, um, helps. And then he's yeah. got a little clutch factor. Something that we, you know, we questioned in Ben Simmons. Um, this kid is not questioning. In, in the state semis, he had the game-winning three in the final seconds. And then in the state ship, he had a game-winning tip. Like, two game winners to win you a state championship? Like, go ahead. That's, like, that's that's stuff of legends. Um, I hope they come out with a documentary on this kid one day. But <laughs> Imani Bates, to me, um, I just – I just really enjoy watching him play and, and watch him develop over these years. Then he's working with yeah. Chris Brinkley in the, in the off season. What you, what's your take on Imani Bates? I like Imani. You're a little higher on Imani than me. I actually like Jalen better as a, uh, for this team. Uh, but I do think Imani is going to be great. Amazing. I think the real question mark for me, when I was looking at this roster and you're looking at it constructed, Imani's going to have to play a little point guard probably, or a little, he's going to have to, can he play off the ball? Can he play on the ball? Is he going to be okay in that role? Uh, cause when I was doing this, you and me might have a disagreement about who would start, but I'm looking at like Amani Bates, probably Timberlake, who we just mentioned, uh, Nolly maybe is going to be in there. Deandre Williams and Duran, who is going to be maybe the guy that can do that. Can he can't play that Penny Hardaway role of basically being an on ball guy? And can he do that? I, before you yell at me, hold on now. What I do like about Amani is that he's a highlight reel. Yes. Like he's got that. He's a contested shot maker. Like when you watch him and you watch his tape. He can make those the, those plays all over the place. He could score in a variety of ways because he has the ability to put the ball in the basket at three levels. He could shoot it from deep. He could get it from transition. He can attack. He's got quick trigger. He's got length. He's got quick release. I love it from that, that spot there. Defensively, he's got some work to do. 
Uh, he can be versatile. He's lengthy. He's long, but he's got some coaching to do. But you know what? He's got Sheed now, like we just mentioned. They're going to be able to get him defensively in there. I just wonder how much they're going to rely on him at, from a ball handling perspective and kind of initiating that offense and if he can do that. And that's going to be really that first couple weeks. That's why they're playing these. I guarantee you that's why they have these schedules. These And you see them play these these exhibition games. And the, the way their schedule works out is because they got to figure out what that backcourt's going to look like. I think their front court is set. That backcourt's important. I, 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 you know, and I agree on that. As far as the uh, the starting lineup is concerned, I think it's oh, uh, see, look at that, look at that. Dur- I think it's it's Duran and um and Williams. As far as the front court is concerned, I think that they have some thinking to do and some. Uh, they they have to throw out lineups and they they will put the ball in Imani Bates' hands and if he can handle the point guard position, I mean, we see his high school stats here: 29, 10 rebounds, but only two assists. Um. I think I think that's huge in the development of his game, um, as far as his his pro potential and all of that is concerned. They don't have a great guard, you know, lineup as yeah. far as a, like a, a point guard that you you really fall in love with. They have senior Alex Lomax, uh, who who is your return um, point guard, and and he has skills. He's good. He's just not a, I guess, a bona fide. Uh, collegiate starter, and he's not a top five talent as far as this group is concerned. Now, I yeah. do have questions on whether Earl Timberlake will start, and I think that's based on fit um, and, and his and his shooting ability. I think that they have other options there that I think that maybe Earl Timberlake is like the first off the bench because I think he can play you know two through five in in certain situations. I think he has versatility, but I think that there's other guys that fit around Imani better. Uh, playmaking will be a big uh, question mark. I I, I yeah. honestly think that um, Landers um, Nolly will 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 start in that that position um, with Lester uh, Quinones, who to me is one of my favorite favorite players on this team. Um, he looked amazing in that exhibition, and I think that he's he's an outside NBA. A draft candidate, honestly, because of his his three point shooting ability, he can rise. And um, they put him at the head of that press. They he really is sound defensively. He's got confidence mm-hmm. for days. Uh, he's one of my favorite players on this team that isn't um, mentioned all the time. Uh, Earl Timberlake does have <laughs> great uh, intangibles and skill, and you know it's a shame we only saw him for seven games for Miami last year and, and for him to transfer over, but um, maybe like a new look will really help as far as uh, that's concerned. Uh, Penny says that this rotation is nine, 10 deep, but I see nine, 10 really good players uh, out of that recruiting class. Somebody that we haven't uh, touched on too much is uh, a Josh Minot. And uh, he, I that you know, Memphis pro day that you only really get when your head coach is uh, Penny Hardaway. He was flying all over the place. Um, it, he will dunk on you if you if you give him a chance, and I think he'll provide a spark off the bench. So, um, I like I like me some some me note. Um, Jalen Duran, though we got to we got to spend some time on on this kid. Yeah, um, just a physical specimen. I'll, I'll let you I'll let you lead the way um, as far as talking about him a little bit. You you said he's like probably the most important player in the team. I I kind of see that just because. You know, Imani Bates, there's other players that can help out in, in some of the things that he does. There's no replacement if this go, kid goes down. No, there's no replacement. And I think what I, the reason why I think he's important is because his interior defense and defensive side. So I think with you, when you look at him from a perspective of blocking, uh, he's going to be able to basically change change offenses that they face just by that. And I think that if he if I think what I what I what I really feel like with this Memphis team is that they're athletic. And they got to get out in space and they got to move and they got to go. And I think that Duran's going to be that big part of that because I think that he can do it defensively, get it out to his playmakers, and transition points are going to be key in this thing. And, you know, Josh, Josh is an athletic freak too, right? Like, and we'll dunk all over you. I love these graphics, coach. So that's part <laughs> of it. Like, when you see like, what they're going to be able to do, and it all starts with Jalen. I think if Jalen can be that kid that we talk about and say, hey, he's a defensive predator, uh, 247 Sports has him comp to Bam. Out of Bayou, I think that's a good comp. I think, and they had him be as a round one top ten prospect. I'd be interested to see where you put him in your in your thing, but he's already NBA ready frame. 
right? He already has the frame oh. that you would like to see. He's there. He already has that. He runs the floor very yes. well. So when you watch yes. him, he's athletic. He's big. He's got a motor. He's a low post. He demands a good double team. If they can get him involved offensively, that's going to open up everything else for this team. And I think he's the most important for Imani. If he can, if he can get that attention on the defensive side, imagine Imani Bates one-on-one. Now they can't double Imani. Now they can't lead that defense over to him. If that's the case, these two guys, if they stay healthy, they can win the title. That's how good they are. And I think defensively, I think that he has that. And the thing about Durant, too, he doesn't just block shots. He alters shots. And when you watch him in the – and now this is high school, so let's be real. When we're watching the tape, it's not like, you know, you got 5'8 guy over here trying to score on him. But he does alter shots a lot. And so when he alters those shots and get in transition, I think Durant's the most important player on this team. I love watching him play. And it, I think it helps the other guys. It's going to help Bates. It's gonna, and it's going to free up some other guys on their – like. You know, Williams, I think it frees up Williams a little bit to do a little bit more offensively. Uh, And in defensively, we know Williams is pretty good, but I love Williams' three-point percentage. I think it's going to open him up a little bit. It's going to get him a little bit more uh, open shots, especially with Duran's ability in the inside. So I think, you know, from an athletic perspective, this might be the most athletic team Memphis has had. And I think that they're going to take the mold of, of of their two freshmen, even though yeah. that they're they're freshmen and they reclassified and they should be high school seniors. They're bullies. They're big and they're intimidating. Um, and they they impose their will on people. And I think that Jalen Duran is leaned on that uh, his entire high school career. I don't think he has too much of a, a low post game. Um, he, but he is a rim running sensation and he catches lob. He dunks everything. Um, he's strong defensively, but yeah, I definitely question him as far as his interior offense. He's, he's no James Wiseman as far as that's concerned or, or even, uh, precious Ochoa. Um, but I think he's he, better than Wiseman. Okay. Um, I Hot think, take. Hot that's, take. That's, I think he's a better fine. overall that, player than Wiseman. That's, uh, that's, a, I mean, I, time will tell. I love, catch, I love catching coach off guard. <laughs> he doesn't know where I'm going to go with this, and then he gets he gets mad at me, and he can see it in his face. <laughs> but I think that Jalen Duran is a better prospect than James White. I mean, right now it's it, it's it's hard because the Wiseman with the injuries and in early in his career. But I think it's just more yeah. a polished player. I I, okay. I do like. Um, Jalen's uh, defensive potential as far as like the BAM comparison and like his lateral movements is definitely way stronger and him being 6'11 with that wingspan at like he definitely has a higher ceiling defensively. Um, I just think he's really raw. He's really got to develop um, those skills. Uh, that's I can't I can't say either way. He's still number you know four on my big board currently and um, I I don't know. I have some questions though. He, he might drop. Uh, we'll see okay. how this this season goes. Uh, Landers Nolly, um, to go back talking about these wings, like that, you know, you might not know too much about. I just, I, I, I like that he has potential to shoot uh, the three, and he's he's six seven wing. Um, he transferred over from Virginia Tech, and um, he was one of the most solid contributors of this team the entire year last year. Um, they 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 bring him back uh, just talking about re- returning team from the N- NIT sheet uh ship you got like Alex Lomax which I think that he's not a he's definitely not a bad player I just think that there's they're lacking a little bit playmaking from that that lead guard position yeah. um but I I've, I talked a little bit about Lester I I just his voice uh he, he's convincing he's got swag like I, I I honestly think that like this kid has has NBA potential. So get, give me some Lester uh, Quinones, uh the returner. I don't know what he's doing here uh, with, the, with the shorts game. Like the kids with the shorts, like cool <laughs> Jalen Jalen Green. Like I had the shortest shorts. No Lester's. I can see all four muscles of his quadricep here. Uh, I'm sure Penny's like, dude, what are, what are you doing from the uh, baggy pant era? But uh, his ga- his game is cool. I-, I might not agree with his sh- his short game. <laughs> he got the, was it the SpongeBob's uh, uh, shoes on, but he, they, you know those are the kids these days. Now, little guy that's coming back, to, uh, Tyler Harris. Uh, he started 15 games as a freshman, um, average 11. Um, but he is a-, a spark plug. He does not shoot a high percentage, but when his when he does make a bucket. It's huge. It's like, it, you know, I don't know. It's, you're a little guy. When your little guy gets you a bucket, it's like getting like a huge block. So give me give me some Tyler Harris off the bench. I think that was a solid uh, a get 
coming back. Um, uh, the Lawson Bros, who we haven't talked about, uh, give them some depth. Um, we haven't um, t- talked about uh, other um, – Dandridge, uh, a solid big man um, coming off the bat. This team, that I know Penny said they're 9, 10 deep. If someone goes down, Sam Uno, like Malcolm Dandridge, like they're huge all around, even in the Lawson Bros as well. So um, I love Memphis basketball. Uh, Monty Bates, of course. Yeah, and Duran, like you know, former AU teammates, like they they're, they're going to be the engine that could. And um, let's see if they tap into the potential because if so, it's going to be some of the the best freshman uh, campaign that we've seen in in some time. So with that said, what's your prediction for our Memphis Tigers? Yeah, so you know, I wanted to be, I want to be. I, how do I say this? I, I think that of all the teams that we've talked about and of the teams that I watch and I've seen, I think this team has the highest ceiling of, of any roster based on those guys that we talked about, those freshmen that we mentioned and just the, the overall roster. So like from a, from a player's perspective and from a team perspective, I truly, truly feel like this team, if they reach their ceiling, they can win it all. But I have questions about that, about that backcourt. I have questions about, can they find ways to score if it's not in transition, how is their half court offense going to look like? And I think in the tournament that matters more, obviously in the back-to-back games and those type of things. So I, I have them right now as a sweet 16 team with the potential of making a final four run. If they hit their, if they hit their ceiling and their coaches can bring these guys together and they kind of shake up that, that backcourt and how does that look like? And I think Lester is a big part of that. Can he kind of be more than the six man? Can he kind of come in there, give them that, that really, really kind of solid force in there, that leadership that they need, that older leadership. So right now, Sweet 16 would be where I think they make it. But if they hit their on all cylinders and they kind of get in that groove, I think they can make it to the Final Four. That's crazy. I hate to agree with you. Because <laughs> I, I, I penciled in Sweet 16. Yeah. Um, with maybe a disappointing result. Like, we, we talked about some of the top teams, like UCLA. Uh, we talked about Duke. Uh, we've talked about Gonzaga. We've talked about Michigan. Those are going to be like tough, tough buys um, to get by. And if they're not a you know a two seed, they're not going to see them to a lead eight. I, I don't know. I just kind of see them as more of a, like a four, a four or five seed. Um, and um, th- it, my for projected starting lineup includes uh, Duran Williams, uh, Kenyonis, uh, Nolly, and I think that. It's going to be heavy on can Imani Bates handle the basketball at the at the guard position because if if he he struggles in that position or or we can't uh, find another way Quinones perhaps uh, even though I like I just really like him off the ball if if that doesn't work perfectly you could Alex Lomax you you put him in there and he, he's a solid guy he's not gonna you're not gonna need him to score twenty uh, you got these uh, the surrounding pieces and then who knows maybe Earl Timberlake is just amazing to the point where like you have to start him. Um, and it's, that's a luxury of riches that you got um, so much flexibility in these wing positions with Nolly being six, seven with Kenyonis being six, six with Imani Bates being six, nine. And it, it handles like a guard, like it, it's, they're a scary team and they do have potential to, to cut down the nets. And I think that everybody's going to be tuned in and like the world would like to see a team led by two star freshmen that are, you know, go from yeah. one and two, as juniors reclassify, it's just a whole different age of college basketball. It's like, it's exciting and all eyes will be on Memphis and they'll be on TV. I think this is the best team that they've had since the Calipari days. Last time they won an NIT was 2002 with, with Calipari and that, that sparked them to, to keep rolling. And then, Hey, guess what? Um, Derek Rose comes in and, and you have a great year. So, and we have money and I think I'm rooting for Penny. I love this staff and I love Penny. I think he does an amazing job. All right, and that's all we have today. Next time, we'll preview another college basketball team. Please like, subscribe, comment. Um, Yes, we can't mention the 13th player on the bench. Please don't hate us for that. We were just trying to get our small intake, but uh, giving you a big preview at the same time.